Due to popular demand, this one's popular video is getting re-uploaded. Welcome back. Yup, that's me. In January of 2021, I shared a piece of interview by the Robinson brothers. I was only interested in the short part where they talked about the black people DNA series. Unfortunately, certain errors had this clip taken down again and again. So I will link down the full 3 hour entirety of the interview as I hope this one gets to stay for eternity to give black brothers more insights into their being. Welcome back. Now there are things that an average African or a black person is never taught in school. One is their history and second is any science that touches on their history. Now to understand what it is I'm trying to say, take a look at this video and see if any of these things you hear you ever had in school. I want uh, Dr. Robinson to go into something that he came upon which has set the scientific world of white geneticists into a fit. Dr. Robinson would like for you to talk about the DNA series. Yes. Uh, a few years ago, we, uh, my brother and I read a book. This is Calvin Robinson and his doctor brother, Edward Robinson. Whatever they're about to say will leave you speechless. You can also check out the other video I did about one comment I found mysterious under this video in 2021. How mysterious you could ask? Well, that comment talked about this exact topic, but 13 seconds after the comment went live, it, together with the account of the original poster, mysteriously disappeared like no one was ever supposed to read it. Let's go. My brother and I read a book called The Mark of Oppression. And this mark, this, these two publish, publishers, Cardiner and Oversee, said that they could not understand how is it that a, a group of people, African Americans, have been bludgeoned over their heads mentally and spiritually for hundreds of years and are still surviving. They couldn't understand it, and they said so in their book. The answer came out in 1996, why it is that not only have African Americans survived the worst mental and spiritual bludgeoning of any people in recorded history, but they are becoming champions of everything in which there is a level playing field, no matter what it is. We predominate in every field. This is why they won't teach our children African history, because they know that once our children get on the same level playing field as their white counterparts, that they will dominate just like we dominate in basketball, baseball, football, track and field, and anything else in which there is a level playing field. So that while they teach their children about the greatness of their European ancestors, they won't teach our children about the greatness of their African ancestors, because then that would be a level playing field in academia. And they know that we will predominate just like all of these examples we've given them, that our children predominate when they know who they are from the African historical point of view. Now here's what I found out in 1996, a group of geneticists wrote this book, Can Little you Tiny Pimp, Geneticists. Can you identify where they from and the group. how it came about? Yeah, okay. Study? All right, sure. Yes, indeed. As a, an organization is called the American Association for the Advancement of Science. The American Association for the Advancement of Science. Now, this organization is composed of people who study about DNA and the genome. And you've been reading about the DNA and the genomes. Well, this group of scientists came upon an idea by accident at first that different groups of people had different numbers of DNA series. Explain that. Now, a DNA series means that when your DNA is located and say they get a hair from your head and they you're subjected to certain tests, they say, well, this is the DNA of Minister Brown and yours is different from everybody else's in the world. 
All right? Then they found further that not only are their DNA series different, but the number of DNAs in there are different in different groups. Whites have a different number of DNA, and blacks have a different number of DNA series. Apes have a different number of DNA series. Then they found this amazing thing, that the greater the number of DNA series, the smarter the person, the group is, the greater the probability of genius within that group. So they tested the orangutans, these 15 geneticists from around the world. That, now, these geneticists came from nine different universities. And we have here on the cover of the pamphlet they put out the names of these geneticists. And you can see them right there, right beneath, right beneath the title of this pamphlet. Now this pamphlet, most people have no idea what it means. But breaking it down and after you study it and have it explained to you by a geneticist, a trained geneticist, you will find that they're talking about DNA series. Now here are the names of these 15 geneticists from around the world, University of Japan, University of China, Yale University is the headquarters of this organization called the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And you see it down there. Now this was copyrighted in 1996. All right. What it said is this, and this is, this is the mind-blowing part. It said that when they tested the orangutan, they found out he only had three DNA series. When they tested the gorilla, they found that the gorilla has four DNA series. Well, they're a little, he's a little smarter than the orangutan. They tested the chimpanzee, which is an ape, and found that he had five DNA series. Then they went into, they went all into the different races of the world. They went into Europe and tested the DNA series of the English, the French, the German, the Spanish, the Russians, and found they had six DNA series. Then they put all of this, what they found from around the world, on a map. And this map really is called the intelligence map of the world because they tested 116 different human groups and found their DNA series numbers. All of them, all over the world, have six. And they put the n numbers in form of a little flag that you can see on this map. These little flags have a color. And they show, oh, this is, it's upside down. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And they show that the English have only six, and all into Europe, only six. Went over into Japan and China, and they only have six. Over into America with a predominantly European, and they only have six. Then they came to Africa. And they came to the part of Africa. Now all the rest of them, they put in little flag colors. Those flag colors are, are orange red, if you notice. But when they came to Africa, found out that the African people have nine, nine DNA series from here just below the Shanghai Empire down to the foot of Africa. All those 10 nations of which African Americans descended from one of them. We have nine DNA series, the greatest possibility of genius in our group. Now it's answered this age old question, how can a people survive 
being told they're nothing for 400 years, never allowed to learn that they came from beautiful cities and told they came from a jungle. How could a people survive? How can a people become champions in everything they touch? Because they have nine DNA series, while the rest of the world has only six. This is why they copyrighted this. And you'll notice on the outside of this. Now, this map is taken. I took this map right from this page here. And I blew it up so that the world could see it. Even though this is copyrighted, I can't let you have this book because it's copyrighted. The title of the book is called Glo Global Patterns of Linkage, Disequilibrium at the CD4 Locus and Modern Human Origins. Global Patterns of Linkage, Disequilibrium at the CD4 Locus and Modern Human Arts. Now you have to be a geneticist to even know what, that's what they're talking about. But when we broke it down and interviewed uh, Dr. Kidd, the head, he's the chairman at Yale University, he broke it down into plain everyday English so that the world would know that the African American is descended from those people who gave to the world the Great Pyramid, gave to the world science, gave to the world mathematics. A black man named Amos gave algebra to the world 3,700 years ago. It's in the world books, in the, it's in the encyclopedias. They don't want our children to know this because then that would make the level the playing field level for white children. And you know what happens when they made the playing field level in basketball and allowed black men to play. Out of 29 of the top seeded players in the world today, 28 are African American. When they opened up the pen relays, when they opened up the Olympics and allowed blacks to run back in 1932, we've won all the gold medals. And the same thing will happen in the classroom when they allow our children to learn their African history. That's what this is saying. Dr. Robinson, mm -hmm. uh, are you saying that the African American also has nine strands of DNA? I am saying that we are descended from the West Africans who have nine DNA series on this map. That these geneticists, you see the green, you see the green down here? Well, that's where we're from. That's where African Americans are from. Did they test African Americans? They, they, they couldn't, they tested Americans as a group, whites. And they have six. They didn't test African Americans because they know that we are the same people in West, from West Africa. Oh, so they didn't have to? Didn't have to. That's true. That's true. <laughs> How is it that you think that uh, this evolved, that we evolved with nine strands nine. below the Sahara? Well, it tells you in here. This book tells why. Preemie babies, leaving the mother's womb early, too early, never develop to the same height that a baby that runs a full term. Right? Yes. White folks and the Chinese, all mankind arose in Africa. All mankind arose, arose in this part of Africa, right here. It's called the womb of Africa. That's the womb of Africa over here, right there. No, 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 Kenya, Kenya, yeah, that area, all mankind arose there, the great granddaddies of white folks, great granddaddies of Chinese, great granddaddies of Japanese, our great granddaddies, all of us looked the same, all looked like apes, that was 
called Australopithecus. I don't know how technical you want me to get. Australopithecus was the granddaddy, great great granddaddy of all races. Now, they left the womb 800,000 years ago. Whites left the womb and went, wandered up into Europe and the Chinese wandered over into Asia. And they left the womb before they were fully developed. That's why they did not develop melanin like we did. Those of us who stayed developed full term. They never developed the melanin stimulating hormone. This is why, this is why we're the only race on the planet that does not have head lice in our hair. Head lice. Head lice. They're little bugs. Yes. Cooties. Yeah. Cooties, right. Cooties. We're the only race on the planet because we developed full term. We lost our straight hair, that, that animal hair, over 150,000 years ago. You see, all other races have head lice because they never developed fully. Melanin is this magical chemical that is developed on the fifth layer of the epidermis of your skin. Now, we've been brainwashed to believe that the less melanin you, are, you have, the prettier you are, because that's, that's the brain wise. Yes. That's like saying a naked person is prettier than a person with beautiful clothes on. If you get, uh, get yeah, what I'm trying to say, the scenario, yeah. Melanin heals. When you cut yourself, the melanin rushes to the surface of your skin and forms a scab. What color is that scab? I don't care what color. Brown, dark brown. That's the melanin coming up to heal you. This is why we do not get skin cancer because of the melanin prevents it. The only place where we can get skin cancer, we learned it in the inquiry today, is on the palm of the hand and the fingers. And I don't, I don't can't believe we'd be putting our hand up to the sun to get skin cancer. <laughs> Two million years ago. Australopithecus, that's all was on earth, the great great granddaddy of uh, all human beings. And he was there about three DNA series. And then as the millions of years went on, it, he evolved into what is known as Homo erectus. Now, he, had about, he had about three and a half DNA series. They're about the level of the orangutan. If you look at the orangutan today, you can see what our ancestors looked like two and a half million years ago because he has the same golden hair as Europeans hair right today. The orangutan. You've heard of the orangutan yes. over there in India? Now, maybe this is a little too rough for your audience and you're going to get uh, bombarded out of your out of your place in the States because white folks don't like to hear this at all. So, as, as the hundreds of thousands of years went by, we acquired, I mean, all mankind acquired more and more. But those who left Africa 800,000 years ago did not get past six DNA series. They, they had left the womb. The womb is Africa. That's where you develop. So that's it for this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share. See you next time. Peace.